is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Mm -hmm. So glad to come to you again today with our marriage teaching. Thank God for Dr. Howard Woods. He and his wife Bianca, their vision yes. for the family. Mm -hmm. And this is another one of the spiritual toolkits of the ministry of the church yes. concerning marriage and concerning family. Mm -hmm. And we're so happy to team up with them Yes. to bring you these teachings. Amen. It is here, right here in the house, mm -hmm. uh, where it, it all began. Amen. With the family. Yes. And if we, if we look in the garden, when God created the man, mm -hmm. and then he placed a woman there along beside him, like you here beside me, mm -hmm. it was a model. Yes. That we are to be stewards. Mm -hmm. The way God intended to, with Adam, is that how he would govern. Mm -hmm. and how he would do what he had told him to do, instructed him to do in the garden, would be a model for the world. Amen. And so how the home goes, mm -hmm. how the world is going to function, yes. is through the family. Amen. It's through the, through the family. So we just thank God for just having this opportunity here to just share with you just basic talk through the scripture yes. of mm -hmm. the word of God. Amen. And before we begin, would you pray? Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for this time that we have, Lord, and for the blessing of marriage. And God, you created it. And I thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to share it by means of technology. We thank you for our pastor, Lord, and the vision, and Ebenezer family, and Sister Bianca, Lord, for how they have set the examples and allowed us the opportunity to share, Lord, because they care so much, Lord, to provide with the viewers, Lord. So we pray now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would just anoint us so that we can speak only what you would have us to say. Hide us behind the cross of Calvary, Lord, and let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. For, Lord, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to look at Ephesians 5, 25 through verses 33. And I want to look at the role of the husbands. And understanding that when roles are not clearly defined, mm -hmm. they can be abused. That's right. Or, as the scripture says, for we perish for lack of knowledge. Yes. And Satan, the enemy, the adversary of marriage, any kind of relationship, mm -hmm. but since we're here in the home and we're talking about marriage, he takes our misinformation or, or, or not understanding mm -hmm. and, and uses it to, to drive a wedge That's right. between mm -hmm. the husband and the wife That's right. and bring an all-out attack mm. on the family. Understanding that any time the family fails, any time marriages are, are under, is under attack, yes. it, 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 it brings a, a mark against the church. That's right. Christ's divine institution. Mm -hmm. And that first was marriage. That's right. And so I want to, we want to talk about roles of the husband, mm -hmm. the role of the husband, yes. and then I want you to read Ephesians of five twenty-five. Amen. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for it, that He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that He might present it to Himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy mm -hmm. and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Mm -hmm. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined into his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. 
Mm -hmm. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. Yes. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. All right. Amen. Okay. So we, we, we go back to that scripture where it says husbands love your wife. Now, there's a lot of definitions of love. Mm -hmm. I remember back in 1971 when we got married, there's a pop singer, R&B singer, uh, Carol King. Mm -hmm. And she had several hits out. But one song that she sang, I think the lyrics go like this, I feel um, the earth move under my feet. Mm -hmm. I feel the sky tumbling down. I feel my heart trembling mm -hmm. whenever you are around. Mm -hmm. And was describing a love or feeling. And yes. there was another group that, that uh, back in the day was by a, a group called the Delphonics sing La 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 means I love you. So there were a lot of songs mm -hmm. that there were sung <laughs> about, about love. And mm -hmm. we think about love, there's mm -hmm. plays, there's poems, mm -hmm. there's, there's songs, that there's so much that's out here that's right. that defines love or they try to define love. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the marriage, Paul gives a command to the husband, he said, husbands, mm -hmm. love mm -hmm. your wife as Christ loved the church. That's right. And I believe that love there was, in, in the biblical terms, is talking about a love that is sacrificial. Yes. A love that is on purpose, mm. a purposeful love, mm -hmm. a love purposeful. that's that's correct. That's intentional, mm -hmm. purposeful. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to look at it in terms of, of Christ and that the word sacrifice. Yes, yes. Comes, the word sacrifice comes to mind when we talk about love mm -hmm. and that Christ gave himself, mm -hmm. that he ultimately died for the church. Mm -hmm. In other words, being a, a, uh, a savior. Yes, yes. I hear a lot of women say this uh, in counseling and you heard this and said well you know what um i know he has this tendency or i know this or that but let me marry him i'll, I'll he'll he'll change mm -hmm. and what the role of what she's saying was that yes i know he has these these qualities that may have be a little suspect but let me marry him and i'll change him mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna save him mm -hmm. and that's 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 that really that's backwards it it should be the husband that said, you know what, honey, uh, there are some things, you, I might not have said this to you outwardly, but there may be things to get it to know you as knowledge. Right. That uh, things of, of character, not so much as detrimental, but just, just little flaws. That's right. And say, so, you know what, as her husband, as a biblical savior, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that attitude. That's right. Or I'm going to, uh, through my love for her, and through my sacrifice for her, and through my intentional, purposeful right. love, right. that I'm going to show her there's a better way. Amen. Amen. There, there is a better way. Mm -hmm. So the command, husbands, love your wife mm -hmm. as Christ loves the, the church. church. Right. And, that, and that word, Christ-like, mm -hmm. you know, Christ being the example. Yes. The, another word I just said, on purpose. My mind goes back to the scripture in Daniel where uh, it said, Daniel purposed in his heart mm -hmm. that he was not going to defile himself by eating the, the king's portion of food. Yes. He, he, he did it. He made it. He purposed in his heart. Mm -hmm. And if you read the story there that... <laughs> The, the, the food, whatever they, the dietary meal that they were going to give him, he was a Hebrew. He couldn't eat that. Mm -hmm. And so he persuaded those that were uh, bringing the food. He said, you know what? 
let's let's put it to a test. Mm -hmm. If what I'm eating you, what 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 we're eating, versus what you want us to eat, if there's not a difference mm -hmm. in our countenance versus mm -hmm. the food that you're going to eat, mm -hmm. and I think a little test, and I think if you read on that, they saw that the countenance of David, their appearance, what was a whole lot clearer, the skin and so forth. And let me stop it here and say this. Men, part of your loving your wife is taking care of your body. Yes. Going to the doctor. Yes. Men, <laughs> we have a tendency to try to tough it out. Mm -hmm. The things that are going on inside of us is telling us, you need to go get this checked out. And part of loving your wife is... Now, we've been married, you know, 50 years. Right, 50 plus. 50 plus years, that's right. <laughs> and when I first met you, now there were there were some things that the way our family was raised, the things that we ate was, was a little different. Mm -hmm. But because when you came down with a chronic illness in the middle 80s, you had to just make a whole paradigm shift right. in terms of, of your diet, right. in terms of, of vitamins and minerals. And so... I just kind of piggyback mm -hmm. off of you, but what I'm saying to you, to men, if you want to get to a level in your life to where you want to just have a, a as, as the Bible says, as the days of heaven and earth in your home, you, 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 want, to, you want to have a long life. That's right. That involves your health. Right. That involves going to the doctor, get yourself checked out. That's right. That's, that's, that's a part of loving your wife. That is so true. I'm so glad you said that because the Bible also tells us that our bodies are not our own, that they belong to each other in marriage. And so that means for me to care for my body uh, and my health, rather, is also a part of loving my husband. And so you might say, well, I don't think I need to go... Um, to the doctor or I don't think I need to exercise or I don't think I need to be concerned about my, my diet because this is what I like. Mm -hmm. You know, I could have said that when I had come down with this illness, but and even now some of you all with the with the virus out there, you need to um, this is a time for you to do all you can to protect yourself. Yes. Not just for yourself, yes. but for your spouse as well, your mm -hmm. children, people around you. And so, you're right, Curtis, uh, our bodies don't belong to us, so I don't have a right to just not take care of my health, my appearance, everything about my body that I'm supposed to, yes, for me first, mm -hmm. I'm to love myself, mm -hmm. because I don't think I can properly love you if I don't have a healthy love for myself to care for myself, but to care for myself is caring for you, mm -hmm. because you're going to have to take care of me if I don't, and you know, and, and, and not that you wouldn't want to, but why put that burden on you when I could do what I'm supposed to take care of my health and my body? Some things we cannot do, and of course we trust God, and we use faith, but we, we, this is also the temple of the Lord, but this belongs to Him, and that temple belongs to me, so I have to do it not just for me, but for him too. Right. And where their children involved, you need to think about those children too. They need their mom and dad healthy as much as they can be. Some things we can't do one thing about, but we can do the maintenance to take care of ourselves. That's right. As a love, it's a way of loving you. I, you know, so thank you for saying that. And that, that is just mm -hmm. something that we don't think about. You know that our health, yes. habits, yes, health, habits, are very important. Pastor, Pastor and, uh, <laughs> A couple of Sundays ago, uh, just teaching just just been just phenomenal, mm -hmm. just Holy Spirit led. Yes. And he would give mm -hmm. us a word mm -hmm. each Sunday. And a couple of Sundays ago, he talked about health. Yes. And with this and, and with through this COVID, and as the season, I believe this too shall pass, mm -hmm. like everything else has. Uh, he gave us a word that God had given him health, and my mind went back to the scripture. But Paul said, "I wish you that you will." Your soul is prosper and be in health. That's right. You know, even as thy soul does right. prosper. So if the thing about is is work on our our health mm -hmm. because that's where the enemy oh, yeah. can get us is in our bodies and our in our in our health. Right, right. But when we realize that these bodies are the temple where the Lord abides, where He resides, 
that was a game changer for me. You know, it should be for all of us. We want Him, His Holy Spirit, to dwell in us. We want Him to be comfortable at home in our hearts. Mm -hmm. We were talking about our hearts a few weeks ago. And so the Holy Spirit lives there. God wants to indwell us with His presence, with His Spirit. So that's why it's important to be careful how we treat that body. And in marriage, like we said, you know, we come to each other in holy matrimony, mm -hmm. in a holy ceremony. And so we want to present holy bodies to each yes. other yes. that are not just broke down and torn apart. And sometimes they are because of, like you said, the way you were raised, your eating habits and all those things, health habits were not a priority. For me, exercise was not a priority, although I loved it. But I didn't realize how important it was tied to my mental and physical health until much later. And so it, it, I used to think it was kind of a recreational thing to do when you had time. But now I know it is a must yes. to exercise. And mentally I feel better. Spiritually I feel better. So all of this is presenting a good, healthy body that will ensure a long-lasting marriage. You're 70 years old you don't look it. And you have so much energy <laughs> by the grace of God. Yes, yeah. by, God, by the grace of God. You have so much energy. You've never had a chronic illness. But I think a lot of it is because you've always been so diligent with exercise, your job, and involved a lot of walking all day. All day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And you are very careful about what you put into your body. Watching your diet, drinking a lot of water, and, and just really... Uh, not developing habits that are detrimental to your health. You know, some things we tend to think in the church, well, you know, it's just, you know, drinking and smoking, all those things, which you should avoid. You've never done those behaviors. So that is a part. We never have. So that keeps us young. But we also need to be careful about how what we eat, and we also need to make sure that we do periodic checks to make sure that we're, you know, doing what we're supposed to do to, right. take, to take care of these bodies so you can have a long lasting life. And even when you get sick, I think the body can heal itself. Oh, yes. I, what is it that is said that uh, divine health is better. is better than miracle healing? That's right. That's right. So the body is a, <laughs> is a, right. is a remarkable uh, machine that, that God had, 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 you know, had made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderfully made. As, as said. So I just want to, again, just just, just kind of get a shout out to the men there to to uh, really look at your your bodies and, and understand that it's a temple. And if you want to have, you know, Psalm 51, uh, Psalm 91 says that he will honor us yes. with long life mm -hmm. and show us his salvation. Yes. And that, that there, uh, there's a part. That we have to play we have in that you know that long life yes because we know the enemy who's satan the adversary comes to steal kill, kill and destroy That's true. and nothing he would like better than to get a time in your life when you you, you know your kids are grown and hopefully you know you, you you have an emptiness and whatever and you join your grandkids if you have and so forth you want to travel and then these things that catch up with you from your past mm, and true. turning your and concerning your health. Right. And he said, well, you know what, if I just could have been a little more diligent years ago with drinking water, you know, taking vitamins and minerals, exercising, if I had been just a little more, you know, not, you know, God always redeems the time. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that as, as a way of, I, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but the Holy Spirit's probably been telling you, look, you need to go to the doctor. You need to go get that checked out. And so if that's you, mm -hmm. uh, you need to do so. I, I, there's a, a, you can give this testimony. There was a young lady that you knew that uh, you got to talking to her one day, come to find out she hadn't been to the doctor in years for, for a particular situation. And I think that a word that you had given her, mm -hmm. and when she went, mm -hmm. and the doctor said, you know, you... you <laughs> You're right on time with this. If you had just waited maybe another, I don't know, what, month, six months later, no, six weeks later? Yeah, she didn't have much time didn't at all. Didn't have much time at all. But she went on to the doctor when I told her, I said, you yes. have to go. You need to go. And she did. And they found something very serious. Yes. She had surgery and is alive today. 
because, um, you know, she, I think sometimes it's fear of not going. I don't know what it is. I don't know why we're on this. But yes. it, it does relate to marriage. It does relate. It, 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 it relates to longevity and your work of hardship on your family. But also, apart from the health aspect of it physically, our hearts. And we have been talking about the heart. So we have to uh, protect our bodies with keeping bitterness out of it, anger out of it, resentment out of it, unforgiveness out of it. And one of the reasons I think also that you, we've been healthy and you've had just amazing health, Curtis, is that you don't hold on to things. You're very quick to forgive. I mean, you give people so much grace. You give me so much grace. And, uh, and I think that when you keep your heart pure, your heart clean, you stay free of strife, of strife and bitterness and anger and resentment and jealousy and all those iniquities in your heart will absolutely ruin your health. I mean, that has been proven. The Bible says, Mary, heart. It's good like medicine. Like medicine. Uh, and so, yes. you know, being laughing a lot. You and I do a lot of laughing. Yes. And our whole family, we love to laugh. Release endorphins. And also, it's amazing how much better you feel. And Lord knows praise and worship. Oh, my goodness. It has been medicine for me that, I mean, when I come out of worship and praise in my sickest days that I've had, uh, I don't even need any medicine. I feel like a different person. So all of this is very important. And your spouse, you owe it to your spouse and your children to take care of yourself and do whatever you can because you only get one body to protect this temple. That's right. And even though you might be sick, God will still give you joy. That's right. How many days have I been sick? But I had so much joy. I was so happy. I forgot I felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, with, we, so that's kind of Paul did it to, to, to speak to someone out here today mm -hmm. that um, hope this this, this information yes. has helped you. That's what the Holy Spirit just kind of put on my heart about you know, that getting back to the love. Mm -hmm. Now, when we think about Christ-like love mm -hmm. and the definition, if I would ask the average man, uh, like you asked me one time, we were talking about well, Curtis, and I said, well, honey, I love you. And, and, you, and you said, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. I said, well, well, honey, you know, I, I go to work and... I bring home a paycheck, and I do this, which, which is good, which you're supposed to do that. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and so that's love, because the Bible says if a man doesn't take care of his home, he, he's an he's a infidel. He's, he, right. You know, he, he, he's not of the faith. So, mm -hmm. yes, men, that, that is also a part of your love and your responsibility. Right. To take care of the home, mm -hmm. to make your thing, take, make sure things are, mm -hmm. that are kept up. That's right. So, that is, but... But we're talking about biblical law concerning the husband as being Christ-like. Amen. No matter, you know, we, you know you, on the spectrum of years, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 50 years, some 60, 60 years, um, we never can outgrow learning. Amen. Ever learning. <laughs> and, and that Christ-like love Mm -hmm. is saying this as part of being that biblical savior sacrifices that you know what honey mm -hmm. uh i know that you know have a, you have a tendency or she has a tendency your, your spouse to to fly off the handle or do this or do that mm -hmm. but you know what as being christ-like i'm in it for the long haul forever yes. to death do us part and as a as, as, as modeling Christ, mm -hmm. as Christ does for us, he looks mm -hmm. beyond our faults, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? He tells us, I'm going to, honey, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to never leave you nor forsake you now. That's right. There may be some situations where you have to get out of it. But we're talking about, you know, Christ-like love for your spouse, That's right. for you, my wife. That's right, yeah. It's that mm -hmm. my intention my purpose, my goal, is to to make you out of the the, the Christ-like wife, yes. you know, and mother, and of our families I can be, right. as, as God has given me the power to be, that's and right. that's, that's only through the Holy Spirit. That's right. So you say, well, I don't know how to do that. The Holy Spirit. Absolutely, He's a teacher. He's a teacher. He knows, and the Holy Spirit will teach us. But you have to. But that's why you can't grieve the Holy Spirit. You can't. The Holy Spirit can't teach you if you're going to grieve Him. And that's something I think we need to stop and think about. Like we've talked about our words, you know, our roles and responsibilities. 
to love unconditionally, not based on lust, but love. When I asked you the question, what it meant to me, I remember the first time you told me you loved me before we got married, it kind of frightened me. And I said, you said, you know, I love you. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what does this mean? Right. <laughs> and I, I, and I didn't, he, you didn't get the response that I, that I think you were hoping for. You mm -hmm. want me to say, oh, I love you too. But I wasn't going to take that word lightly. I first of all, wanted because I wasn't very trustful of men. And so when you said, I love you, my first thing, it frightened me. Like, what does that mean? I wanted you to tell me what it meant. Because it means different things to different people. Some of us in these marriages, there is, it, our people getting married today, it's, it's not love, it's lust. Because love gives, lust mm -hmm. takes, mm -hmm. and so I. And but you, you defined it very well. You defined it with your character and the way you treated me. Right. But when you said I love you, I like the fact that you took the time to really think about the commitment that that meant. You were saying I'm committed to making you happy. I'm committed to, you know, um, enhancing your life. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the husband is supposed to be represent Jesus, the Savior. And so you conveyed to me that I want to. Uh, help you be all you can be. Mm -hmm. You know, you knew I loved the Lord, you, but and so you want to help me. You want to support my vi my vision. You want to support my values. Right. You wanted to honor the things that were important to me. You wanted to come into my world. You wanted to find out about me. You wanted to know everything about me, and that's what really resonated with me that He really does love me, because uh, hearing words are very important to women. And so when I would hear you and asking me questions, you mm -hmm. want to know what I liked. Right. You would you would follow me. Uh, I think back during that time, I would go look through pattern books because we made clothes. My sister was a seamstress, and so I would go look through pattern books to pick out patterns for dresses that I, or things that I wanted her to make. And you would go right with me and sit there beside me for I don't know how long as I went through those pattern books. But you know that you know what that said but to you, me. Yeah, but that you know what? I, I, it was love. Of course, I I wanted to be with you, but at the same time, I was getting to know you. Mm. And I appreciate that, I that was, you wanted to know I me. I was I was getting to know you mm. and the things that you you know interest you, and so I was also learning, also, and so men, as important as, as it is, of Christ like. Christ-centered love and that as Christ sees us, as Christ sees the church, if I am, if we are to be that Christ-like lover, mm -hmm. you know, that, that he has called us to be, mm -hmm. uh, we need to, to really just dwell with them and get to understand them. And being a good provider, keep doing that. Uh, Keep doing what you're supposed to do on on a domestic scene, right. but then that's that's a that's another level. Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That God wants us to enter in mm -hmm. in terms of loving our spouses. Yes, that God kind of love. That God kind of love. Like Sacrificial love. Mm -hmm. Sacrificial love. Like mm -hmm. I said, is yes. We may have arguments. We may have disagreements. Mm -hmm. There are things going on around the house that. I'm not satisfied with, mm -hmm. but you know what? I'm going to be intentional. That's right. I'm going to get my feelings out of the way. That's right. And mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. I want you to lead me mm -hmm. and guide me. Mm -hmm. And you said, well, you know, we've been married 30, 40 years and, and the feelings are not there. You know what I say, men? Mm -hmm. You just get on your knees and repent. That's right. Start serving your wife. And I believe through the power of God, the feelings will come back. They will, and as you often talk, you are the initiator. You're right, we're the initiators. So if you, you know, and you will get the response back most of the time from her that you give, that you sow first, that you give first, because the man is supposed to be the initiator. He is the one that, as the husband's responsibility would be in the husband that covers the wife, that, that uh, and you know, some men want to be macho and like, well, I'm the man of the house. Well, sir, your model for manhood really is God. And Jesus Christ, his son, left the model for that. And what did he do? What did he say? Mm -hmm. He said, the greatest are the servants. That's right. Jesus was a servant. Being he got down and washed leader. the disciples' feet. Yes. You know, and he he was always tender hearted and loving and kind. He loved children. He was always bowing down. 
bowing down mm -hmm. to serve. There are some cultures where the women bow down to serve the husbands. I know a young lady in her culture from another country, she said we bow down on, they bow down their knees to serve their husbands and they just feel so low all the time. And when she came to America and she came particularly to our family and she saw you serving me, you know, and, and, and us serving each other and it just like blew her away. She was so moved by that, but she also said that that's, this looks like Jesus mm -hmm. more than anything I've seen in my country because your husband is acting like Jesus. And so and, and any woman who is a real woman, and I'm assuming most of the women who are watching this want to be godly women. They want to do things God's way in the Bible way. And I can say to you without a doubt, and to the men, if you serve your wife, and you are the initiator like Christ, you will get a response of submission to her. It is not hard to submit to someone who loves you, who honors you, who serves you. And if you serve her first, because you, you know you want right. to be the head, then That's do right. what the head does. That's right. <laughs> and I would say, well, you know what, uh, Mr. Hampton, uh, Sister Jeanette, I, I, I'm, I'm doing this, <clears throat> I'm doing this, and I'm, it seemed like I'm, I'm not getting anywhere. Sometimes it, it seemed like it's getting worse. But I'm saying, trust God and keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing can't it. Can't stop. Can't stop. Mm -mm. Don't lose heart. Don't 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 faint and just say and give up and quit. Right. Because it will manifest itself in a in a in a breakthrough. It absolutely anyway. will. That uh, we've seen that in marriages over the years. And understanding too that you got you can trust God. Do it as unto Him. Yes. You know, it's just like your employer and your job. You want that paycheck, but that boss is getting on your last nerve. But you know you have to submit to Him to get the paycheck, right? And you know you got to do what they tell you, do what you want to or not. Like how do how about we do that for God? You know, God, I don't really feel like this. Maybe I don't even think my spouse deserves it, but I can do it as unto You. I'm going to I'm going to use sacrifice sacrificial love sacrificial that Jesus love. did That's right. to bless you yeah. to honor you to care for you to give you what you don't deserve. That's right, and that's what He that's certainly what he does us every <laughs> right. single day. Every day, yeah. He gives us what we don't deserve, and as a model, men, we have to look to Jesus Christ, mm. the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. And so again, as the scripture says, husbands, love your wife, mm -hmm. even so as Christ loved the church. Yes. And it's only possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank God for you tuning in and mm -hmm. are watching this broadcast. Um, these things that, that we're talking about, it may seem the enemy is trying to tell you, well, you can't do that. That's impossible. All things are possible yes. <laughs> through Jesus Christ. Yes. And to just trust Him. And we are here with these teachings to inform you, to instruct you, as uh, our pastor has uh, put this ministry together mm -hmm. and this marriage ministry to go through to you by video mm -hmm. to help give you the tools to instruct you. So you're yes. not alone. You're not alone. You, you're, you're not alone. Right. And we're so glad we connect with you. So thankful to God. I just want to pray right now and thank God for, yes. for the power of technology and God for allowing us to be able to have this opportunity. Thank you, God, for our pastor, Lord. Thank you, God. Been wanting this so much that he would support us and uh, provide the technology. And for all those who make it happen behind the scenes, Lord. Yes. They're putting everything together so that the people can see, Lord. And God, I just thank and know, Lord. And Father, we don't know anything, really. But we thank you that we have the Holy Spirit to teach us, to help us, to educate us, Lord. You know, Father, over the years, Curtis and I weren't able to always get to counselors when we wanted them. And back early then, a lot of the counseling was not even there. So the only counselor we had was your Holy Spirit. Yes. Jesus, you are the counselor, Holy Spirit inside of us. 
So, Father, we ask right now that your Holy Spirit will come in and help those who are struggling, saying, I wish I knew how, but I don't know how. Lord, I pray that you would just give them that humility of heart to just ask your precious Holy Spirit into their hearts that they, first of all, will accept you, Jesus, and believe that you died for their sins. You went to that cross, Lord. Yes. Father, you sent a way for redemption, for salvation, so we would not have to live uh, and be in bondage to be ruled by our flesh, and we would not have to serve sin. Even though we sin, we, we have an advocate with the Father yes, Lord. through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. So Redeemer, Holy Redeemer, Jesus Christ, cleanse the hearts of those who are searching and who are listening and who are trying to make decisions right now whether to serve you and stay with their spouses and love their spouses or serve the devil and leave their spouses and then they would curse their family and on down the line generations. So in the name of Jesus, we break that stronghold off of their minds and we pray that your spirit will just do the work in their hearts, Lord, so that they will repent. We pray for a spirit of repentance, Lord, for all of us because we all have sinned and fallen yes. short of the glory of God. So, Lord, we pray now that you will move and do only what you can do, and we will thank you, Lord. We thank you in advance for what you're doing in our hearts, God. And we commit ourselves to you. And we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless God you. God bless you. Be free. Be free. And be clean inside, because he cleanses you. And he whom the Son has set free is, is free, free indeed. Amen. Amen.